Interns, we've got you covered. Go to onlinemeded.org to see all of our intern resources. This is going to be an advanced talk on ventilator strategy, why we choose what we do in ARDS. Remember, ARDS is a non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. It usually occurs in sepsis. There's going to be a low tidal volume, high PEEP strategy. Let's talk about why. Just picture this like a CT scan. This is the patient's spine, their heart, sternum, lung, lung. Normally, in the normal state, the lungs are said to be homogeneous. There's homogeneity. And if we were to apply a positive pressure ventilation to normal lungs, that pressure will be distributed equally throughout both lungs. We're using four arrows to indicate that positive pressure ventilation uh, per lung. The total of eight distributed equally, no problem. In ARDS, spine, heart, sternum, left lung, right lung. Non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema will accumulate in dependent regions. That is, if the patient's on their back, it'll accumulate in their posterior. As we'll discuss in a moment, when there is derecruitment of alveoli, there is a massively increased resistance because the airways are closed. This is a loss of homogeneity. Because now if we apply that same positive pressure ventilation, that volume will go to the path of least resistance. That is, the front of the lungs will still get the, the normal amount that they would have anyway, but now the arrows that would have gone to the dependent regions are translated to the good lung, which means that we end up overventilating the good lung because the concrete lung, the ARDS lung, won't move. And when people think of barotrauma, they think of actually causing a pneumothorax, popping the lung. But it's actually, you don't have to do that for it to be bad. Heart, sternum. What happens is the good lungs get stretched out and the bad lungs remain the same. This stretch is problematic. It can lead to a pneumothorax and that's extra bad, right? But what that stretch does is releases inflammatory cytokines. And ARDS happened because of inflammatory cytokines. So if you overstretch the, the good lung, you end up making ARDS worse. So presuming that we have less lung to ventilate, it makes sense then that we would want to choose a strategy with a low tidal volume. And the reason for this is to prevent barotrauma. which is why when you set someone up on a ventilator for ARDS, it's four to six cc's per kilo of ideal body weight, which is based on their height, not on their weight. It doesn't matter how much adipose or muscle you have on top of your rib cage, your height determines how big your lungs are. Volume, low volume to prevent barotrauma. The other part of our strategy is to use a lot of PEEP. This is the normal alveolar capillary exchange. Very little diffusion barrier. Oxygen can get into the bloodstream, no problem. And the way the lung is set up, there's lots of alveoli lining the capillaries. In this state, the, the alveolus is in its normal state, recruited. When there's non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, fluid leaks out. The real problem with this fluid, though, is that it collapses the alveoli. Tiny collapsed alveoli surrounded by fluid doesn't work very well, and that's called derecruitment. Because the force of the fluid pushes on the alveolus, there is now both decreased surface area and an increased 
diffusion distance. Since oxygen is diffusion limited, oxygen is not going to be able to get into the bloodstream very well. Likewise, once the alveolus is collapsed, once it's de-recruited, it won't reopen, which contributes to the increased resistance and the lungs being like concrete. So what you have to do then is in initiate intervention that prevents de-recruitment. Positive end expiratory pressure ensures that there is always pressure in the system, PEEP, positive end expiratory pressure, which gives the alveolus the strength to fight back against that fluid. So even though the capillaries are still leaky and there may be an impaired diffusion barrier, the alveoli stay open. And this treatment is the prevention of derecruitment. Because once collapsed, you are not going to get them back open until whatever caused the ARDS is gone. So a high PEEP strategy prevents derecruitment. We also know that giving a high FiO2 can be toxic to the lungs. And as we learned in the oxygenation lesson, PEEP and oxygen are both things you can do to increase the, the PaO2. So if you've already got high PEEP, great. Now you won't need to use so much oxygen, and that PEEP is preventing alveolar derecruitment, which will mean that less lung will end up like this, and you're using low tidal volumes anyway. So we know very well low tidal volume, high PEEP, that's the strategy we use all the time. Proning has been gaining favor, and I'll show you that it should not be used as a last ditch effort. Spine, heart, sternum, left lung, right lung. When you look at the patient on their back, the forces of gravity are pulling the, the fluid in the posterior. But there's something else that's happening. The heart has a mass and is pushing down on the lung underneath it. And in the supine position, there's lots of lung under the heart. If you flip that person over, spine, heart, sternum, left lung, right lung. The heart sits on the sternum, so there's a lot less lung that experiences that force of gravity. You should keep them prone for 16 hours and then upright them for eight. Prone for 16, supine for eight. What you're doing is constantly moving the body around so that the fluid doesn't stay in one place. It prevents alveolar derecruitment and exposes less of the lung to the weight of the heart. But if you already are in deep ARDS and the peak pressures are going through the roof, it's too late to start proning. If you think you're going to need to do this, prone early. And the last thing you can do before you need to call your critical care attending is paralyze. Paralyzing helps with the pressures in the tube. If the patient bites or chews or tries to breathe or do anything, it's going to mess up the pressures in the lung. And if you paralyze them, you eliminate that. I made a joke there. If the person is needing paralytics or proning, you should probably have your fellow nearby. I really wanted to show you that you should do this early, so expect it to happen more often. But if you are the one to put the tube in and you know that it's ARDS, high PEEP, low tidal volume, start your FiO2 as high as it will go and then dial it back to get them to 92%. You can even allow for a low pH because of accumulation of CO2 to prevent the peak pressures from going up using a low tidal volume. That's ARDS ventilator strategy. Ooh, being an intern is tough, huh? Well, with online MedEd's videos, Case X and Intern Boot Camp, it can't be easier. <laughs>